So you said something about other day. That got me thinking about a video. But I don't know if you want to put this on video or not. It might be a secret thing. So, <clears throat> I just got boss's orders. She said, sit down over there. We're about to make a video. So I don't know what it's about. And I don't know what I said. Because I got a poor memory. And you say a lot. And I, I talk a lot. More than I should. So, what is it? So you said nobody's on the water because everybody's scared of cloudy water. Cloudy water? I mean clear. Dirt, dirty water. Yeah, dirty water. Yeah. So. Yeah. People don't like dirty water. Is that a big mistake people are making? I don't know. I would say yes. Because I'm fiending for dirty water. Like, I love whenever it's dirty. Obviously, you know that. Why? It repositions the fish, you know? It makes the fish move from suspended, floating over tops of stuff, suspended under the top, under floating docks, out in the middle on bait. It moves them from there to the bank. And I like to fish on the bank. So uh, that's why I like it. And my whole life, it's just been obvious to me that uh, when they get stained up, they act different. They lose their freaking mind when it's stained. And I'm a fan of bass when they lose their freaking mind. So, you know, for me, I like fishing when it's dirty. Unless it's too cold. If the water temp's in the mid-40s, 47 or below, I would say, it's not good. But if it's 50 or 52 or 55, oh my God. Sign me up anywhere in the country. Tell them how cold it was when you went the other day. So the other day we went and it was literally at daylight in afternoon and it was, the guides were freezing. I was throwing braid. The guides were freezing. Like me and my buddy were fishing and we was alternating whenever we caught one. And literally, he'd be running the front of the boat, and I'd just be standing there holding my rod. And then, when it's my turn to cast, I couldn't cast because my stuff would be froze. So I'd dip it in the water, thaw it out a little bit, and then cast. And uh, it's fun, though. They, were, they really, really, really are biting right now. And we just had a major cold front come through for two days. Probably, you know, hurt them a little bit. But for the most part, it's good right now. Pretty good. So you can't catch them live scoping when it's dirty? Oh yeah, you still can. You still can. There's just, there's just less out there. They don't get as deep. They, uh, you know, you still can for sure. But I haven't turned it on since it's got muddy. What type of bait changes do you make? The biggest thing is n none, really. No. Yeah, like the same baits I was throwing a month ago in the tournaments around here are still the exact same baits that I, I have tied on now. It's just where the fish get and having to make multiple casts to some of the places. That's the biggest difference. Show them your hats. Oh God, dude. Check this out. That's a bunch of Crush City hats. And I got two of these sleeves. So how many is this? I was probably like 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 25. I got 50. 50 hats. I'm going to be throwing them out the truck window at people if they wave at me. Like, here you go. Here's you a hat. Here's you. I'll be like, Oprah, you get a hat. You get a hat. You get a hat. <laughs> but they are nice hats. Y'all see me wear this hat a lot. The Crest City hat with a little rubber patch on it. Or maybe a silicone patch, I don't know. But anyways, got a bunch of them. The other ones are exactly the same, right? Okay. Hold on, where are right here. Yeah, exactly the same. Should we do a video? How many hats does a pro fisherman have? We have like thousands. This is 50. We get rid of a bunch of them. This right here is 50. So how many more do I have? How many do you need? I mean, you like eight? I need like eight hats for the year. Like you can only fish with one rod and reel at one. Hey, 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 hey now. Hey now. Easy. Easy now. 
We get a little off topic there. I'm just saying. I can fish with a lot of reels throughout the course of a day. What else are we gonna talk about? I don't know, you told me to sit down. How many hats do I got for real? How many do you think I got? That This is 50. Probably about three or 400. How many have you got rid of? Over the course of five years? Since I've been a pro? A thousand? Yeah, that's a lot. That's absurd. That is absurd, you know? And they're expensive too. I know, they're expensive. But I'm assuming I got these to give away, right? I guess. I mean, <laughs> it has to be. Or he's like, you know. You do I'll, wear dirty hats sometimes. Or he's going to be like. That Fuji hat looks like it's been through it. For one I know, but so, there's hat variants. I've talked about this before in videos. There's hat variants. You can get three of the exact same hats, and they don't fit the same. Even if you're using Richardson's, you know, they don't fit the same. You know? And Richardson's are supposed to be the best. I mean, you find one that fits right, you just kind of. And I hear people talk about breaking it in and stuff like that. I don't do that. They either fit that right. Fuji has or they don't. In. One of them is. Yeah. The one with the actual Fuji circle on it, the one I like the best. Yeah, that one's that one's broken in. So I seen a video of the last time the class it was on Grand Lake and it was snowing. Yep. What do you think about that? Um, I think they bite when it snows. Really? Yeah. It's just hard to get the boat in the water. It can be. Can be. But you know, <clears throat> we got a four wheel drive tundra now. Yeah. So it'll be all right. But anyways, you know, the previous classics on Grand have been about a month earlier, I believe. So we should be through the snow, hopefully, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I didn't even know it snowed in Oklahoma. I, I guess it snows just about everywhere every once in a while. I'm excited about that one, though. Ho hopefully, we'll be able to fish our strengths a little bit and catch them. That's kind of what I want to do all year this year. I kind of want to fish my strengths all year, you know? Leave the livestock at home? That, so there's some aspects of that that's my strengths now. Really? Yeah, some some of it, not all of it. Like, there's a, there's different ways. There's like probably five different categories of live scoping. Comment below Kyle's least favorite way of fishing. Oh, y'all gonna know that. Y'all gonna know my least favorite way of fishing and my biggest weakness. Ledge fishing. Yeah. 100%. Now, obviously, when you pull up and they're there and they're ready to bite, anybody can do it. You know, if you find them, you pull up and you throw and you catch them. But I just, I didn't grow up on Tennessee River. I've almost never, I fished uh, two ledge tournaments ever, I think. You, yeah, I fished two ledge tournaments ever. One of them was forever ago and then one of them was on Pickwick a couple years ago so I mean I've literally only fished two ledge tournaments you didn't grow up on St. Lawrence River either but you got to figure it out at some point in your life it's a different thing though because it fits my style St. Lawrence River fits my style ledge fishing does not fish fit my style the Tennessee River fits my style pretty well for probably about nine or ten months out of the year it fits my style pretty decently, you know, because we've been to Tennessee River other times of the year, and I've had some good ones. I've, I've had, I had a really bad one one time on Chickamauga, but, you know, that was just me making bad decisions. But for the most part, you know, the Tennessee River fits my style, but ledge fishing doesn't because ledge fishing is about cycling through baits and finding the optimal bait and what triggers this school of fish. And I can do that. I can cycle through baits, but when you have a ton of experience like some people do, on, on, on those ledges, you just kind of feel it, and you know. You see the fish, you idle over them, whatever you do, you see them on Ford Face Sonar, the Humber 360, and you know how what they're kind of gonna bite. And for me, I'm just kind of like cycling through baits just because I've got them laying there. You know, and other people that have more experience, they just know today's a, today's a big shaky head day. Today's a football jig day. Today's a, you know, 10XD day. Today's a DT20 day because it's more subtle. You know, like there's there's a lot of different different things that go into it that just come from experience. And whenever whenever you've spent, I mean, I don't know, le probably less than ten days ever ledge fishing, it just can't can't be your strength. You know, like I've spent how many days have I spent fishing shallow? I mean, you know, flipping, I don't know. skipping a top water, like foul, like a day for your life. yeah, a ton. So I get that, you know. 
I, I can pull up to a pocket and fish shallow for 15 minutes and get a really good feel for how the day is going to go, you know, and start making adjustments from there. Whenever I'm fishing offshore, it takes me a while to make the adjustments that I need to make just because I haven't seen the situations as much. So that's something I need to work on for sure. And I'll probably work on it some this year, but I mean, our schedule, we just haven't been to Ledge Lakes. Is Pickwick going to be one? Um, yeah, we got two this year probably. What, Wheeler? Wheeler and Pickwick. So. Better go pre-practice. Probably need to go somewhere like uh, Gunnersville for a few days beforehand. Or, or somewhere where they get off. Gunnersville, sometimes they don't get off that good. If there's if the grass ain't, if there's a ton of grass, they don't really get off that good. So, you know, definitely need to go probably put some time in though, right. somewhere. Did we talk about that classic where they flew them in the private jet on video? No. You know Hunter is all about that. So we I was want, watching the. I want it so bad. Shout out to the cast um, videos from Bassmaster, where they show Ray Scott's kind of in the beginnings of Bassmaster. But uh, Hunter was watching that with me, and she was like, "Why do we do fun stuff like this anymore?" And I'm like, "I don't know. It's just not that fishing's not like that anymore." But I mean, dude, that would be that would be really, really freaking cool to be able to fly in a jet somewhere. And they on, didn't know the lake didn't know the lake you take your rods and reels with you you get like 10 pounds of tackle that's that's awesome and they you know have a boat there. yeah they have a boat there everybody's got the same exact boat i mean you take your six rods or whatever however many you get and your 10 pounds of tackle and and you go and i feel like that would suit me that seems like the coolest thing in the world to me like yeah that's cool i feel like nowadays there's more money in the world right <clears throat> there's just like yeah. more money so like, they print that just, crap all the time why can't we just do that now same amount of gold, way more money. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like back then people didn't have as much. Yeah. No, I, that that's hundred percent true. But Ray Scott was a, he was a different type of businessman. It seemed like you know he was trying to build something, trying to blow something up. Yeah. Like like he was trying to say, hey, bass fishing right now is so small. What do we need to do to make it? Yeah. You know. Like if there was so I have never been into Formula One ever in my life and now netflix has to show formula one what's it called drive to survive drive to survive and like once they are interviewing the people you get to know them like it makes the racing way more exciting yeah once you're like in the in the know about everything the drama it just makes it more exciting i feel like if we did that and like people knew like what you were fighting be cut because they're they're rude to people like yep. you know there's always the villains in there and the people that are actually driving to survive like yep. that's what's fun that that that's why people Who's about to be cut that's why people have such a relationship with the people who do youtube yeah like like you know, know because people come up to me and talk to me like you know that i've never met like we're you know best friends and it's because you know we we post so much of our life on youtube that they begin to, you know, have that, you know, recognition that we're so similar, you know. It just, I got very fortunate to make it to the elites. And that's, you know, basically the only thing that sets me apart from the average fisherman. Is, I mean, I still love it. We still got the same passion. We still sit at home and tinker with baits and tie skirts on jigs and play with this color and that color and dye this and change spinnerbait blades and, you know, all this type of stuff that the average guy does. You know, the only difference is... I fished the opens one year and got very, very fortunate, you know, and now it's kind of been a snowball from there. But I mean, it's. Don't you think, have, would you like be super into a Formula One race if you didn't like know all the people? And what I couldn't get on? into it for like four episodes. Yeah. I could, like, well, like, you, like, yeah. started. For, like three or four episodes, I was like, man, I just don't know anything about Formula One. Like, I have yeah. no idea, like, nothing about it. And then, uh, like, I didn't even know who the top, like, I, I'd never seen Lewis Hamilton before. And at the beginning of that race, he was like the at that season, he was like the man. And then like now, he's obviously, you know, kind of phased out because of his team is not as cutting edge. But like, that's a uh, I couldn't get into it for like four episodes, and I don't know what switch. But had some buddies of mine that really really liked the show and told me about it. They was like, dude, I've watched it three times. I'm like, man, it just they ain't doing that for me. And then I, I got about halfway through the first season, and I was hooked on it. So I mean, that 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 is really cool. We we need that for for bass fishing. Bass Masters, Fish to Survive. Actually, Drew Cook and Drew Benton's um, title for their YouTube is what it needs to be, probably. 
Yeah. Like the cut line. That is the one like a... If people just like are on Fox Sports watching fishing, they're, they might not even be able to get into it. But if they knew yeah, if they, if they knew on, the people. Yeah. yeah. It would. It would. It It'd might be, a lot be completely easier. different. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely true. But that's what it needs to be. It needs to be Bass Masters, the cut line or something. Something similar to that. But I mean, the cut line kind of goes for every, every sport too. You yeah. know? Like there's people in the NFL that are on the cut line. You yeah. know, there's people in MLB that are, you know, on the cut line of AAA and MLB and stuff. So, I mean, there's there's some, some in all that. But We could come up with a good name for it. So, leave a comment below. Should Bassmaster invest millions and millions of dollars into this? <laughs> I'm just kidding. It don't kidding. have to be Bassmaster. Like, Netflix probably paid for most of that. Yeah, but Formula One is huge. So, obviously, Netflix is going to invest money in that. Yeah, but... I mean, if we started doing stuff like that, it might get big. Like doing the private jet thing to the classic, it might people might care more about it. They they would. I mean, all that type of stuff. That's all that type of weird stuff. Because like a lot of the hype about that, like if you're going to a specific lake, let let's say we're going to Chickamauga, there's people that are favorites. Yeah. That are just favorites, and you're like, well, I don't even need to tune into this. I know, you know, Buddy Gross is going to do well because he lives there. Yeah. I know these people are going to do well because they live there. Yeah. If it's like completely random. And like we've been there a million times, so all the same people do well. Yep. So if we've just never been there, or it's just complete surprise, and maybe a lot of people during practice, you know, it helps them a lot. Well, the cool thing about that was it was a southeastern thing. You know, it was basically from the way I understand it, Oklahoma to Florida was the all the professional fishermen back then, as far as I know. So they could fly that group of people to Lake Mead, and they didn't know anything about it. But now we've got people that fish Lake Mead a lot. You know, like Clifford Perps would be a, probably a huge favorite. Zaldane's been there a few times. That's what, I mean, I, I know, I, I believe he has anyways. So I feel like there's still guys that would be a favorite now go to Lake Mead. So you might have to find a different lake, but it would. I, I'd be, I'd be all for it. They're like two rods, six baits. Fly you to Lake Harding. Yeah, yeah, there's an airport like nowhere close to there. Or we could do like they do on Fort Benning down there and they jump out of the airplanes. Like, because I've been down there fishing and see them jump out with parachutes on. All the fishermen have to jump out, parachutes on, land in the field, run across. You got to go like dig up a rod, find a tackle box, go get in the boat. <laughs> That'd be too dangerous That's though. That's like survivor. Yeah. Could you imagine? That, I mean, it, it'd, it'd be it'd be very interesting, but <laughs> Jason would just be like, I'm not doing yeah, it. He'd be like, I'm 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 staying at home. I'm staying out. I'm staying in bed. I can't do it. All that stuff though, that's intriguing like that that gets people talking about the sport is very very good for the sport. Matter. Is he fussy? No, he's sleepy. Sleepy, sleepy little baby. That's a blessing. When a baby gets sleepy, it's a blessing. Trust me. What else you got, Hunter? I don't know. Are you ready for Logan Martin? Hope so. We're going to see. What are they going to do? I don't know. It depends on the current, depends on the water level, depends on the water clarity. A lot of stuff's going to dictate how that tournament goes. Hopefully, warms up just a tad. That water's above 50. And I can catch them how I want to catch them. If that water's in the mid 40s, we're going to have to probably grind a little bit. But there's big, giant spots in there. There's really big, nice, largemouth in there. So we've got to figure out which ones we can catch and roll with it.